Upwork. Upwork is a global freelancing platform where businesses and independent professionals connect and collaborate remotely. It began as a merger in 2014 between platforms of Elance and Odesk. It's one of the premier marketplaces for freelancers and talent seekers. And unless you've been working under a rock all these years, if you're a freelancer, chances are you've heard of it and you've probably even worked a few jobs through the platform. Its success is undeniable. Just this past year, it filed for its IPO and officially became a publicly traded company. Its stock market debut was profiled in an article by CNBC. In it, they write, Shares of Upwork rocketed to more than 50% higher when they opened for trading for the first time Wednesday morning on the NASDAQ. Now, given its launch to the top of the freelance platform industry, it would seem like a no-brainer for would-be independent contractors, businesses, and talent seekers to join the Upwork community. But does Upwork's own success merit your membership? Hi, I'm John Marble, and this is Build Your Difference. This is Build Your Difference, a podcast created by Blue Artists, a brand platform with one goal, to help great visionaries like you build impressive brands. Every month, we'll bring you insightful tips, knowledge, and compelling stories from successful entrepreneurs and the Blue Artist team on how to create and market a winning brand that does more than just launch a new product or service. It starts an ongoing conversation. Because you're not just making a brand, you're making a difference. Let's start building. It's been reported that by 2020, 40% of the American workforce alone will be freelancers and independent contractors. Companies like Upwork understand this future, and it's working overtime to position itself as the go-to marketplace for freelancers and consumers. In this episode, we're going to look at the pros and cons of Upwork from the perspective of the freelancer and consumer, focusing in particular on one of its biggest setbacks that is ironically a big reason for its success as a company, an overcrowded marketplace. Now, before we go any further, full disclosure, I am currently active on Upwork as a freelancer, and these days, anywhere from 50 to 70% of my work comes from the Upwork platform. And while I don't wish to bite the hand that feeds me, after all, there are many great benefits to being a part of the Upwork community, it's important we are aware of both its pluses and minuses. For those of you who have yet to join the Upwork community and are on the fence, here are a few reasons why you might want to think about joining today. So the site has some really cool and nifty features for both freelancers and clients. So for example, it shows the percentage of completed projects on each freelancer's profile, so clients are able to get a sense of experience levels. It also allows clients and freelancers to rate and write reviews of each other that others can see. And whether you're the client or the freelancer, having a profile that's full of positive five-star reviews is like gold on Upwork. One of the first things I look at in a profile are the reviews. If I start to see low ratings continually popping up, I'm going to be reading those reviews to see if I can find out why. If I find the reviews are all leaving similar complaints, then depending on the needs of my project, it's probably a good sign that I need to find someone else to work with. Upwork also provides opportunities to interview freelancers with their messaging program. It provides file sharing. It saves clients and freelancers time by preparing invoices and processing payments. Now this is a huge help. Come tax time, you will be so thankful. And it offers something called Upwork protection. It's a guarantee for clients that they are not responsible for paying unauthorized projects. And it also protects freelancers by having an escrow payment system in place. This ensures that freelancers will get paid even if the client should suddenly drop off the face of the earth. Now, unlike Fiverr, where clients come to you, on Upwork, freelancers have to bid on jobs. From a positive standpoint, 
This gives the freelancers some control over the type of work they get. And it keeps them proactive by hunting for that next job. But on the flip side, this structure has also led to some problems, which we'll get to in a moment. But first, I wanted to share something with all of you. So, back in April, I got an email from the Upwork CEO, Stefan Kazriel, that announced an important but unexpected change in their platform. I'd like to share it with you now. Hi, John. I'm writing to tell you about an upcoming change to Upwork's Connects pricing and terms of service. Starting in May, Connects will cost 15 cents each, with no free Connects. You'll need between one and six connects, depending on the job, to submit a proposal. Proposals submitted for invitations you receive from clients will continue to be free. On average, most freelancers will spend about $5 per month or less on connects. Now, there's of course more to the message, but that just gives you the gist right there. And as I read it, in addition to my brief disappointment, after all, one of its selling points for me when I joined was not having to pay a fee to bid on jobs. I immediately found myself asking why. Why spring this on us now when things seem to be going so well for the platform? Kazriel's answer to this pressing question? He writes, We want to help professional freelancers like you win more jobs. With paid connects, we expect freelancers will submit fewer proposals, increasing your likelihood of winning projects and making it easier for clients to identify high-quality talent. Okay, makes sense. And that had me wondering, why was this even needed in the first place? The answer to this lies in one of the site's greatest strengths, which ironically, as we've mentioned before, has also become one of its greatest weaknesses. Overcrowding. According to its Wikipedia page, Upwork has 12 million registered freelancers and only 5 million registered clients. Its vast community of online workers with a variety of skill sets is one of its greatest selling points. But consider those figures once again. 12 million freelancers to 5 million clients. Simply put, this platform has essentially twice as many freelancers in need of work as it has clients who are offering work. So let's say you're a podcast producer, hoping to score the next gig producing a podcast for a client through Upwork. Just how many other potential podcast producers will you be competing against for that job? Well, (laughs) I looked it up, and without adding any search filters, I am up against at least 2,208 other freelancers with some sort of background or experience in producing podcasts. Now, Certainly, that number would go down when we factor in those search filters to include things like specific locations, style and genre of the podcast, years of experience, profile ratings, and so on. But I'm undoubtedly still competing against a frighteningly high number of other seemingly qualified candidates. Of course, we've got to ask the question, how did this overcrowding come about to get us to where we are now? Well, we have to look at what's attracting people to the Upwork platform. Among its positive features, Upwork allows for simple click of the button hiring and even offers a worker monitoring system where clients can see screenshots of every second the worker is clocked in. It's a great move for increased transparency. Like other platforms we've covered, Upwork also takes a commission. It starts at 20% for the first $500 you earn from a client. Now, No one likes to have to pay a commission. After all, you just put in all that hard work, you should get the full payment, right? However, Upwork has two features that help turn this negative into a positive. First, this commission decreases as you earn more from the same client. After you pass the $500 mark, the commission drops from 20 to 10%. And once you reach $10,000 in earnings from the same client, it drops to a meager 5%. The great thing about this feature is that it encourages freelancers and clients to build those long-lasting relationships where over time, you can develop a pool of reliable workers, your clients, to turn to when you have a new project come up. On the plus side, these commission rates are tax-deductible, as it's technically considered a business expense. 
This commission policy, while an unfortunate feature, is also the primary reason for another of the site's positive aspects. Basic membership is free. While it does offer clients and freelancers a premium membership at a cost, Upwork is also able to offer use of its platform to clients and freelancers essentially for free by taking those commissions on income earned from projects instead of charging basic members a monthly membership fee. I guess you could look at it as kind of a win-win. But this in turn has contributed, at least in part, to the platform's rapidly growing community, and in a way, that's become a problem. In response to the overcrowded mosh pit that is this freelance marketplace industry, we freelancers initiate one of Upwork's biggest setbacks, its biggest challenge for the independent contractor by lowering our rates. We imagine there's an opposing freelancer who we, right or wrong, might assume is more qualified than us. Is this other freelancer charging the same rate as me? What if my rate is too high? Perhaps I should drop my rate in order to win this client. Then along comes another freelancer, who may be imagining that my rate is of a certain amount, and that they should charge less than me. The thinking here is, there will likely be somebody somewhere who will do the same work for far less. And as long as the work output meets the quality of what the client seeks, he or she will gladly pay less. This little dance creates an environment where freelancers are forced to compete against each other through underpricing and, consequently, lower quality work that suffers in value. All this does is make it exceedingly more difficult for a freelancer to find and attract quality opportunities. With the overcrowded competition fueling underpricing, freelancers must then work three times, five times, maybe even ten times harder to secure the monthly earnings needed to pay the bills. It's not enough to design a website for three clients a week. Now to make ends meet, you're having to design a website for eight clients. This arrangement is just unsustainable, as in the end, freelancers will become overworked, underpaid, and exhausted. This is a recipe for shoddy work, and no client wants to pay for shoddy work. And that's important to remember, because it's not just the freelancers who suffer under this arrangement. Imagine the daunting task the clients have before themselves when they must choose from hundreds, if not thousands, of potential candidates for a job. Once a client posts a job to the Upwork platform, they can be bombarded within minutes with dozens of bids from freelancers. In a few hours, they may have several dozen bids, and it just keeps growing from there. I was once invited to apply to a gig that, in less than a day, already had received over 700 applicants. Can you imagine having to sift through 700 applicants? Imagine you're a newcomer to this platform. It's your first job that you're advertising on the site, and you're hit with such a high number of applicants. Finding the right person for the job suddenly seems like an impossible task. You've come to this site to have a job done, hopefully by a trusted and reliable professional, and instead you, the client, are having to do all this work. And what is Upwork's response? Well, twofold. First, it introduced tools to allow clients to actually invite their own freelancers or employees to their Upwork gigs essentially circumventing the traditional bidding process. Say a client has worked with a particular freelancer in the past on creating a voiceover for a product advertisement with great results. The next time this client needs a voiceover, he or she can reach out directly to the specific freelancers that they think would be a match for the job. Because the reality shows that clients don't want to spend their time sourcing endless proposals from faceless freelancers. They want a system that vets, curates, and presents a limited number of the best candidates, making it easy for them to move forward with their project goals. And up until this past month, a free membership would get freelancers 60 credits a month to apply for jobs. With jobs worth two credits on average, that allows freelancers to apply to 30 jobs a month, or a job a day. Now, they've just rolled out a new policy where freelancers will need to pay 15 cents per job proposal. That's still incredibly cheap, but needless to say, it is an annoying change if you're a freelancer who's relied on the ability to bid on jobs at no cost. However, the Upwork team's strategy here seems clear. By charging a tiny fee to submit job proposals, they're hoping this will lead to fewer freelancers submitting proposals to a job. Fewer freelancers bidding on a job, 
means less competition between the workers and fewer candidate profiles that clients need to sift through to find that perfect freelancer. It's too soon to say how this new policy will play out, but it's clear as this online freelance marketplace industry continues to grow, and especially as Upwork continues its meteoric rise to the top of the community, it's going to need to find a way to combat its overcrowdedness lest freelancers continue to suffer from the risk of underpricing and clients suffer from the risk of receiving low quality work. Because, as the saying goes, you get what you pay for. So is Upwork worth your membership? I suppose you'll need to evaluate your needs carefully to make such a decision. In the end, it will largely depend on whether Upwork's perks outweigh its cons for you personally. But one thing seems certain. The site and its growing global community doesn't look to be slowing down anytime soon. Okay, everyone, make sure to follow us on social media so you'll be sure to get the latest news and updates from Blue Artists, like our upcoming brand desk. I'm John Marble, and this has been Build Your Difference. Thanks for listening to this episode of Build Your Difference. If you'd like to learn more about how Blue Artists can help you develop a distinguished brand that inspires and engages a growing audience, then please visit us at www.blue-artist.com and be sure and subscribe to our monthly podcast for the latest tips and trends in brand development and marketing. And remember, you're not just making a brand, you're making a difference. Start building yours today.